Right now on KPIX 5 and streaming on CBS News Bay Area, an arrest in connection with the deadly mass shooting in the heart of California's capital city, who police have in custody and the search still happening now. I'm Ryan Yamamoto in downtown Sacramento, where we're learning new information about the six victims killed in gunfire. And this evening, we're hearing from the families whose lives are now changed forever. I just want to just make sure that the world know that he was loved. No reason there's no rhyme. It wasn't just my cousin who lost his life, but other people who lost their life. California already has some of the toughest gun laws in the country. So is adding more the answer? The debate over how to prevent more violence. And a new billboard calling out San Francisco's fentanyl crisis. The critics who say it will only hurt local businesses. Good evening, I'm Sarah Donchi. I'm Alan Martin. And I'm Ryan Yamamoto heading up our coverage of the mass shooting live right here in downtown Sacramento. Sarah and Alan, I'm right here on the corner of 10th and K Streets. This is right in the downtown Sacramento core. And this is where six people were killed in the barrage of gunfire. That area is home to restaurants and businesses that are back open today. And earlier today, police finally cleared this crime scene. And this evening, police have the first break in their investigation. Police have arrested 26-year-old Dondre Martin. Police are calling him a related suspect. It's not clear how he's connected to the shooting, but we do know he was booked on assault and illegal firearms charges. Sacramento's police chief says they are looking for multiple shooters. They are now looking at video from surveillance cameras in the downtown area, trying to piece together what exactly led up to this deadly shooting. Police responding to a chaotic scene on K Street early Sunday morning. We got a lot of people running. Someone's shooting. I don't know if anyone's been hit. Investigators spent hours combing the crime scene and found more than 100 shell casings. In the hail of those bullets, three cars, three buildings were struck by gunfire. Five people down. Temporary needed unit at 10th and L. Stop all uh, traffic not to come northbound. We have a large crowd and a lot of CPR going on. The investigation has already led to detectives serving search warrants at three nearby homes. At least one handgun was recovered. And while a motive for the shooting has not been identified, police are also reviewing this video of a fight that broke out right before the gunfire. It's unclear if the two are connected. And this evening, we're learning more about the victims who lost their lives after that weekend night out. They are 38-year-old Sergio Harris, 29-year-old Devaze Turner, also the two youngest victims, 21-year-old Jontaya Alexander, friends called her JoJo, and 21-year-old Emil Martinez Andres, who was from the Central Valley. 57-year-old Melinda Davis was homeless, and 32-year-old Joshua Hoy was a father of six. Twelve others suffered gunshot wounds, and Sacramento police say their injuries range from minor to critical but stable. And we have team coverage on this horrific shooting. KPX 5's Kenny Choi is here with me in Sacramento with family members dealing with this horrible loss. Ryan, family members of these victims are still coming to the scene today. Just moments ago, I spoke to Devazier Turner's mother, whose uh, family members, uh, they also came to pay their respects. They wanted to visit the growing memorial that is set up here now. Yesterday, uh, this area that we're standing in was taped off. It was part of an active uh, police investigation uh, of this mass shooting. Now the streets are open up to the public and the memorials are growing. Devazier Turner's mother couldn't hold back tears. <laughs> You're taking lives away from families, from, 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 the, from the children, dads. You know, you're hurting us. This is deserving. Jackie Henderson stared in silence in front of lit candles for the six shooting victims. His cousin is no longer a part of his life. Absolutely. That's my family. I'm flesh and blood. 38-year-old Sergio Harris was a father of three, whose own father remained behind police tape for nearly the entire day on Sunday, hoping to see his son. A whole bunch of shock. Yeah, yeah, your shock ain't gonna go away overnight, no. He was a good cousin, he was, he was a family man. That's who he was, and that's how he'll be remembered, and that's how he will remain. It's just a sad situation that that has to occur when people are just out enjoying themselves. Vince Pearson is the founder of ACE for Attitude, Commitment, and Excellence, a local nonprofit introducing new experiences like cooking to young men of color, trying to steer them in the right direction before it's too late. There's something positive you can do in life, young man, and not lead down a path that you feel you have to have a gun, 
why you need to have a gun and why you need to harm somebody else with a gun. There's no reason, there's no rhyme. It wasn't just my cousin who lost his life, but other people who lost their life. And it's, it's a senseless act of violence that there's no call for it. No call for it. Also, just moments ago, I spoke to Devazier Turner's father, who told me about his last meeting with his son before that shooting that happened early Sunday morning. The two met at a gym. They worked out for several hours before his son headed out to uh, downtown Sacramento. Just an incredibly sad scene here uh, right now. Just off in the distance, about a, a half block away, I could hear someone uh, wailing um, at the scene where the memorial for some of these victims is growing. Ryan. All right, thank you very much, Kenny. And let's give you some perspective. Where we are in downtown Sacramento, you heard those trains going by me, that shooting shaking up the heart of the city. It all happened at 10th and K Street, just one block away from the state capitol. It's also near the Golden One Center where the Sacramento Kings faced the Golden State Warriors just last night. And today I caught up with Gerald Smith. He was driving through downtown on early Sunday morning. He just happened to be stopped at a red light those shots started to ring out. I was parked right here waiting for the light to change and the, they started shooting and people were diving in front of my truck. I couldn't leave. And so I had to sit there and the next thing I know I woke up this, the next morning and there was a bullet hole in my truck. Well, I mean, what were you thinking at that time when this was trying, trying to get out of there? Just trying to get away. Were you frightened? No, not at all. Because of the job I used to do. I, I work for an armored car, so I'm used to bullets. So when this happened, like, did everyone just start scattering? Yeah, what happened? You saw everybody running around, jumping down, lying on the ground and everything. And you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I mean, my truck's not, but I'm fine. And, and as the next day, how, how do you feel about everything that's happened here? I think that we should all have gun control. And while he said he wasn't scared, he did tell me that places just aren't as safe as they used to be. Back here at here live, the community will be coming together to remember the victims tonight. That vigil will be held at 7th and K Streets. It's scheduled to start at 7.30. And we'll be back here live at 5.30 with an emotional interview with the sister of one of the victims and a look at, at a call for more investment in community programs to prevent this kind of violence. Back to you. So many sad stories. Thank you, Ryan, for bringing us that coverage.